Okay, good afternoon. A lovely day here. January 29th. I am Z and I'm joined here with Nightwolf. How you doing, Nightwolf? Doing pretty good today. It is a beautiful hazy day here. It looks like the smoke is making its way back down from Canada. I like the haze a little bit because it keeps it from getting too hot. It's not too hot today. Nice. Thankfully. And it's supposed to be with us day and night, the haze today. And I'm not sure about tomorrow either. I'm going to look it up because if we get a good smoky day, I'm going to go get some footage from the top of the mountain. And uh, that kind of leads us into our topic. We're going to branch off from our spirit board readings and we're going to do a little conversation on Earth. And what better is our new location here outside in nature than to do a little talk on nature. Uh, nature is my favorite topic other than our creepy... Zozo, Ouija board experiences. I, I'd live in nature if I could. It's, there's nothing better. We are very far removed from nature, especially today with the phones and screens attached to everybody's faces. You We're in really... a weird spot, but you know, it's still nature. We're, 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 we're going to do a reading from the top of the mountain one day, and you're going to love that. I do love being outside in nature. Good not to have walls. Exactly. No walls here. We got the sun overhead. A little bit hazy. You can almost see the sun. Birds chirping. Birds singing. We got the water not far from us. We are surrounded by the elements out here. So very much. So well, with the haze, okay, that leads me into the first first area of conversation. The sun. You can't really get a good picture of the sun unless you have a UV, the UV sap. Yeah, because it's too bright. For, it actually... It's too bright. You'll damage your, your camera. And your the retina in your eyes. Yeah, not to mention your own eyeballs. So the sun, with this haze and smoke from Canada, I got the idea. The sun is so bright, you can't look at it for too long. But with these clouds, I was outside wearing sunglasses and there was thick haze and smoke over the whole area, just a blanket. And I could see the sun, the perfect ball, right through the clouds and the smoke with my glasses. I could look at it longer than usual. So I said, hey, I gotta get my P900, get a picture of this. And this is the pictures I showed you of the sun. It looks so similar to the moon. It does. I, what about I, the pictures I sent you? They were, I got some nice fit pictures without even using anything. Because it, I guess because of the, the smoke is covering the sun in such a way that it, it actually looks like a planet more than the sun. It looks so, it's almost unexplainable what it looks like. And since we're gonna do a questioning the world we live in type of episode, I'm not so sure my my little P900, now it could take close-up pictures of the moon, mm -hmm. but the sun, 90 some odd million miles away. And I get the same response to the same zoom level as the moon. That's a little odd. That is odd. Maximum zoom, it's perfectly in frame. I could see the sun and I could see the moon and I compared them. They're the, that go right over each other. Hey, and by the way, if anybody has any ideas of what we're talking about or opinions on it, feel free to comment. We'll pay anybody's comment on the topic we're talking about, whether you think we're crazy or whether you believe what we're saying to be true or anything, or you have ideas of what could be the truth, feel free to comment in the comments. I question we'll take every, anything. I question everything. I always have. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. my upbringing. I was just very rebellious. And I question everything too, so. It makes for good conversation. I mean, if you just exactly. conversate about every single thing that's already supposedly known and believed, I mean, 
Well, one of the shows I listen to or belief is the enemy of knowing. I mean, mm-hmm. what you believe, what you know, and what you believe other people say, I mean, from your own experience, everything is completely different from what you read or history that you, you're you presented with, because who are these people? Mm-hmm. But you watch interviews on PBS or Nova, you watch interviews and these people are scientists. Mm-hmm. They say they're scientists, they're paleontologists, and they're walking around like, these people have how many years of education? and they seem like they're actors. That's cool, true. Cool, cool, cool. They're walking around cool using such unscientific terms. And I mean, yes, it's for a different audience than their colleagues mm-hmm. or anything on that level of academia. But it's just hard to believe some of the stuff that's presented to us. And they take us for such fools sometimes. They and don't. I don't. I don't like it. I don't appreciate it. I don't like being told I'm a monkey. I'm originated from an a ape. <laughs> Come on. I mean, it's 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 just so unbelievable. But I actually, you know, speaking of that topic, I, I like there's beliefs that we were created by aliens and supposedly we're half alien. If the aliens could possibly even be humans from a different place. Yeah. From across. Well, if you believe in space, from across space. If that, you believe the just the unending realm that's true aliens could be over the earthlings over just that just spread out among the galaxy because technology could go back millions of years that we don't even know about i just don't I, one thing i don't believe is the history of the world when they say we're what five six seven thousand years of civilization i i, I don't buy that and i even watched the show yesterday where they were they were in the white sands of some desert in western United States and there was supposedly now everything is supposedly and from all these little tiny findings whatever you would want to call it it was white sands and it looks like you're in a different world it's just unending white sands and there's these little indentations in the sand and it they were as big as say you dropped a bowling ball or something in these sands and I don't know what kind of properties the sand has but sand is very vulnerable to wind rain, erosion very fluffy that kind of but they would piece together that these were, and I'm not even kidding you, a slough, a 10 foot slough walked through these sands 10,000 years ago or 10 million years ago. I couldn't even pay attention to the timeline. But these people are there just walking through sand and they're saying it's from the last ice age. Just walking through with their footprints. As in where it, they come up with these things? As, as it hasn't rained, the wind never blows there, the sun, wind, rain, nothing had any any influence on the, the current landscape. Like that was all untouched prehistoric findings. And they're just walking along. And then you get these, uh, what are they? CGI recreations of a 10... 20 foot slots standing up. I mean, it was comical. At one point, they said, here, it even stops. And the side tracks, the, ca- the, they, the cander walks off s- sideways as if they were carrying their baby along and something startled them. What? what? Who believes this stuff? It's actually in sand. Sand just, once the footprint's there, it blows away. Oh, I wish you'd seen it. I, 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 I wish I, I saw know, that. I didn't know how comical it was going to be, but everybody there, even my 90-year-old grandmother was there watching it, and she said, some stuff you just, you really have to force yourself to believe, you know? I do like watching this stuff, though, because I want to see what, what, uh, what whack wacky stuff they're trying to push on to everybody and what we're supposed to believe it it, it all insults your intelligence like I'm the authority you're the low pleb 
You gonna a lot refute? of people just believe everything they see. You gonna refute what I what I've just told you with thousands of dollars of equipment no. and man hours and study? Not in sand. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, it was just so unbelievable. And and the time before that, it was about the moon, on how they went to the moon, and ninety percent of the show, Night Wolf was CG computer graphics. I know that's another topic in itself. Did we or do we not land on the moon? I'm still set on those pictures. You could look all day long on the internet. Pictures, pictures. Mm -hmm. Are they edited? Who took them? Are they even real? Can I tell a real from a fake? I took these with my own camera. Showed several people. Hey, look, the moon. And guess what? The sun, it's the same exact size. And how does my little camera rival space agencies or the telescopes and all the big fancy equipment my little camera got a perfect close-up shot and you can see the sunspots mm -hmm. right through the haze because i don't have the uv filters and so on but it's the same size as the moon the moon 200 some odd thousand miles away the sun 90 million miles and my camera got the zoom to the same size. If you over, overlay the photos, the exact. I wonder what's actually happening when you get the eclipse. What's what's really going on there? I'm not too sure. That's another thing. I got the blood moon photos. Mm -hmm. The blood moon, the blood eclipse, whatever they call that. I have no idea. I That's, wanted to get pictures of that. There, it's very difficult. Hard to get pictures with your phone, though. Phone. And it's it's ever moving across, so you have to have a tripod set up, and it's difficult. To, I, a lot of sh shows or people say that the when the the moon crosses in front of the sun, you can't find the moon. You won't be able to find the moon. I don't know. I want I would like to see what they find, but I don't have the time to go track it eclipses but they're very interesting but the moon story is a very interesting topic though the moon have we gone to the moon like like think about this like if it is a hoax how like how like they convinced everybody and like it's weird too because we had the technology to go to the moon back then but we don't have the technology to go there now but what they say is it takes too much. This is what they say. They say it takes too much money and too much energy to actually go through the atmosphere to get to the moon, and that's why we haven't returned. But what are we actually supposed to believe? It, it was just so much propaganda for that time with the cult. We had to beat Russia. Well, yeah, I, I know that. I wish I was alive during that time to see what the news the general population. I was watching a video, I think it was Neil Armstrong, but somebody was questioning Neil Armstrong or the guy that was with him. And he actually punched the guy in the face. He wouldn't put I his hand on the Bible? I, I saw Neil Armstrong punch somebody in the face because he, he, either him or it was the other guy that went to, I don't know who he He wouldn't put his hand on the Bible and that, swear he went to the moon. And he was irritated was, because they were calling him a liar. That was Buzz Aldrin. Yeah. He wouldn't put his hand on the Bible and swear he went to the moon. That's probably because he had so much pent up anger and frustration of whatever secrets he's keeping. Did you ever see yeah. that video where they're 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 in a plane? I don't know how high up they are, but they're there's the like the circular porthole window in the plane. Yeah. And they're constructing a a crescent shape to put on the side of the window and it looks like you're taking a picture of a blue marble. You ever see that video? Maybe I have to see it again. But this is what gets me, like, why would they lie about that? Like, and then here's why, because I don't care. I actually literally could give a rat's ass, excuse the language, but if we did go there or not. So why lie? Like, what, what is in it for them to lie about it except for they wanted to beat Russia? 
there's got to be something else going on there of why they want to lie to us about things. The best country in the world? I don't know. Listen to us. We're so smart. We're so intelligent. We're better than that country. And they got a lot of people. And all those people. Tens of thousands of scientists are going along with this. Now, I wonder what they really believe, if they really believe what they're telling us, or if they're purposely lying to us, or if they really believe it. What, like, what, what's going on there with tens of thousands of scientists? And where did they get the technology? Was that German rockets and all that stuff? So they had the best of everything, with the V2, and everything was superior. Well, they, a lot of people say the Germans got all the stuff from us, but... They got the technology from, but yeah, who who really knows? I, I just don't, I don't see how they can go to the moon. And remember they brought the little buggy and the golf, the golf clubs to the moon? Yeah. If you're going to the moon, are you bringing golf clubs, Dave? Night Wolf? Unbelievable. I just don't, I don't see how you could bring golf clubs. And then they, like, they were even showing something about the flag. How is the flag blowing in the wind when there's no wind on the moon? Yeah, no. That's another thing. They had to explain that away, too. Quick, easy explanation. They have explanations. Solar wind. Solar wind, whatever they want. Solar wind with no gravity? Solar wind with gravity. Gravity. Everything is based on gravity, but gravity is still an unprovable theory and always will be unprovable. Yeah, like if there's nothing to hold you up, you're just going to drop. There's nothing there to hold you up. I don't people in Australia right now are upside down. That's Really? Their buildings are upside down and planes that fly there go around the ball and they're upside down. Well, technically we're sideways. I know. Technically we're supposed to be sideways. In a perfect 33.3 degree tilt, huh? 333? Yeah. I don't buy it. It's, there's just so many questions. Well, it? they, they've been questioning our ancient ancestors. They all questioned it. They all, a lot, a lot of people but believed the earth was flat and stuff like that. Everything that we believe or we're close to nature has just been scrapped. I mean, if you look at people used to be connected to nature, well, what happens? Religion comes along. You're a pagan. And we'll kill you. You don't believe in our God? You're connected with nature? You're worshiping the devil? You're a pagan. If you're a pagan, it was the worst thing in the world. Well, the contacts with the European traders in the 17th century, they're the ones that introduced the round earth theory. They're the ones that first came out with it. Like, where did they get it? Especially back then. Like, how did they know have any technology back then? European? Yeah, the European traders, the ones that came up with the round earth theory. England specifically? I'm guessing, yeah. But you know how they used to enlarge the maps to emphasize yeah. the countries with more influence and power, like the United Kingdom, Britain, England, United States was roughly the same size as Africa on one of your old, your old maps. What about those stupid? Not true. Yeah, what about those stupid flat earth pictures that you could Google to make to make flat earthers look like idiots? Yeah, but even just skewing the maps to give England more power, say. Yeah. And it's such a small area. England is so small, it's... You, you wonder how much influence came from them on their, their, their direct power, you know, because... How many people could there be mm -hmm. in such a small area? And it's it's just a wonder how they could have so much influence and control over everything, you know? Yeah. Now, i got to pronounce this name the right way. It's Titus Lucretius Carus. He was a Roman poet and philosopher in 99 BC. He actually came up with, he wrote, he goes... It is so ridiculous to believe that the other people on the other side of the earth are walking upside down. Like, he was one of the first Romans to come up with that. He, he, he started questioning the round earth theory. And, it, and that was BC, that was before Christ, or whatever you want to call that. Was it still flat to them at that yeah. time? Yeah, he, well, they, that, well the, the Europeans came up with the round earth theory and... 
Titus Lucretius Carus is the one that questioned it. He's he's questioning. Yeah, I'm I'm supposed to believe that other people on the other side of the globe are walking upside down. He goes, nope, I don't buy it. I I I just think it was another form of control. If you're saying it came from Europe, they didn't want anybody exploring the oceans too far. It's another thing they lied to us about. They they actually told us Christopher Columbus would. I think is in a jackass in the first place, set out to prove that the earth was round. But there, there's no proof of that. He actually, like, he, he I, from what I heard, he knew there was nothing about that. He was just exploring. It was just another bullshit. They already telling us bullshit, but from right, right through history. Like, what is the truth? Yeah, it's hard to find it. You just don't know. And don't actually... Believe. If you believe in Christianity, like when Christianity got influenced back in the early days, in the, and this is in the description of the temptation in Matthew 4, 8 in the gospel. The, the devil brought them to a, the highest point, highest level, and you can see the entire planet from up there. And this is in the Bible. And they're like, there are other terms saying that you can see all the four four corners of the earth from up there too from the highest point you could see everything and, if, and a lot of people believe in the bible and it's right in the bible so what do you believe there's a lot in the bible referring to the firmament and the oceans above and the oceans below I admittedly never read the bible it's, there's so many layers and levels of understanding mm -hmm. that you could read the same section or paragraph one day and interpret one thing and read it again the next month and interpret it totally a different way mm -hmm. depending on your spirituality and everything yeah yeah some people like to believe yeah i believe in religion completely i follow everything in practice but it's funny that day, believe, but i don't believe it. i don't believe everything in the book they're saying that the bible is true but yet they don't believe stuff like that that came from the bible because if you could see the entire, all four corners of the earth from the highest point, how is the earth round? Yeah. When I, you're going in a plane, it all looks flat. Yeah, I honestly, I, I, I couldn't tell you what it is. Simulation, I don't know if I believe sim, sim, simulation because everything is so living on earth. Or we're so yeah. tiny that that's why it looked like maybe we're still tiny compared to the whatever i'm just it's a theory where we're still tiny compared to the earth that it looks like it's flat because we're so small if you look at pictures say from a satellite or something and the clouds are above the land they're so close to the land you know it's like they're stuck on the, the land and it's such a weird perspective to true me. it's it's Here's a theory I heard too. Like, sorry to cut you off. When you no. know when you're zooming in mm -hmm. on an interactive map on the internet, pick Google Bing, whatever. It, they're all the same. You Google, or you you zoom in, and it's a fake computer generated mm -hmm. computer graphic. You could generate anything it, with computer graphics. Yeah, but you zoom in from the Earth from the satellite view or whatever perspective, and it's. It's not real. It's not a real photograph. And then you zoom in until you get to a certain level of closeness. Mm -hmm. And then you could tell the real photographs from their planes. And it's not computer graphics, you know, and it's very close to the ground. So you wonder how high can they really get up there? Mm -hmm. it's, it's also... They're also saying you just don't believe it. It's, that when you're in space, like just to look at space like this, that there is no such thing as up and down. Like if you were on the other side of the earth, they think we're upside down because because of it's just the perception. They might actually believe we're upside down, the people on the other side of the earth. Oh, there's nobody on the other side, they're upside down because of it. But that's also a little bit of a theory there. That space is, there's no such thing as up and down in space. And that's the, with the gravity thing stuck with yeah. the gravity how can something a force be pushing you down when this is pushing down right 
right now. My, my piece of paper right here. Yeah. How come it's not bending down further? It's hanging right over. Yeah. Or... You, there's nothing there to hold it up, so it just falls. It has mass. Yeah. It has weight. Everything has weight. If it's lighter than air, it floats. Mm -hmm. If it's more dense than air, it goes down. I just don't understand it. I, I don't understand I, it. And there's so much math and equations and high-level stuff you can prove that say there is gravity, but I don't see it physically with my own eyes. You know, I don't care about the equations. I mean, it's, it's at some level it's ignorance, but some things in reality you don't need some smart equation telling you what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm looking right at it. I feel it. Mm -hmm. I'm not being pushed down. You know, I know when I'm being pushed down. If I put weights on my, my, my wrists, if I'm exercising or working out, I feel the pull. Yeah. You feel, you know, your body, you can sense, you feel. And we're telling our bodies, our brains, no, mm -hmm. no. You know, like, there is gravity. No. Here's another thing. The earth is what, 70, 80, 90% water? What if we just took all the water away from it? Then it, 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 it definitely not round after that. I did the water. Maybe the maybe the water gives the illusion that the Earth looks round, even though it's not. And they, or is it round and flat? Like, is it? Are we, are, is the Earth actually? Maybe the Earth is kind of flat, but it's sideways, and that's why. Look, maybe that's why the Moon looks round and all the planets look like they're round. Maybe they're just flat but that's just how we're looking at it that could be another thing that's going on there too yeah and it, it just looks round and the moon it's like a time piece you know it's a way to tell time in the sky yeah you know through the ages it's like nature's calendar you know everything is tracked you can track everything the sun the moon and it's like your your calendar in nature are the planets really round or is that just the angle we're looking at it and I was watching a show, and they, they said they found water on the moon. And how did they come to that conclusion? They launched a rocket into the moon to explode some of the, the layers in the, the sediment, whatever it is, moon dust. And they said that water came up from the soil. Man is dangerous shooting rockets at the moon. Like, that's good. What, what, what if they screw up the solar system, though? Unbelievable. That you could do that. You could really shoot a rocket and hit the moon. Are you? It's. And because in space, there's supposedly in space, there's no gravity. So how could a rocket shoot through space? Well, then again, how could meteors go through space? Too? How could you go through space, period? There's nothing to push off of. There's no air. There's nothing. How can a rocket... Is, that's a Nothing. very good question, though. Especially if what they're telling us is not true. What is space? Like, what is out there? Like, what is it? Like, they say an ocean in the Bible. Galaxies and galaxies and galaxies. Like, they're supposed to be. Space is supposed to be forever. Like, what is actually there? And it's to make you feel insignificant. Where does it go? It's if it go, if it's forever, where does it go? It's just unfathomable to process that in a human being's mind. And I think that's why they do it. Because they never have to prove it. I wonder if there is actual truth to what is actually really there. They say grand things like that because they never have to prove it. And the funny thing is they probably do try to prove it in some sci-fi or some science show or Nova, you know? It's... It's all computer graphics, for one. Here, look at our satellite. It's flying through space. 100,000 miles an hour. 500,000 miles an hour. I don't buy it. I want to get, like, I would actually like to talk to a, a, real, a scientist that actually believes all this and not see if he really believes it or if he's part of blowing smoke up everybody. It's so compartmentalized. Or what they actually believe. It's so compartmentalized. You'll never get a person who actually contributes to the whole construction of one 
solid piece of satellite or say somebody will make this somebody will make this somebody will make this and it all goes together you know you'll never get one guy doing the whole over you know it's and it's contracted out you know yeah but i wonder if they, like all these people actually believe all the nonsense or Probably. or if they're purposely lying to us or if the, even if the scientists what if they're looking at optical illusions but who's feeding it to them well you got that guy from nasa saying we have to photoshop pieces of the earth together because you cannot take a picture of the earth the full earth why? That's interesting too. What is it? And what's on the other side of the uh, the polar caps? The the ice. If you believe Antarctica is the ice wall, you know, even using our own maps, that the only few maps we have access to that they say are somewhat to scale representation. Oh, where is it? It was. I was doing a square mile mm -hmm. outline of where you can measure land masses across the earth and say Russia's here, so I would outline Russia and it would give me the square miles. Antarctica is down here, I'd outline it and it would give me the square miles. Now how big is Russia? Russia's pretty big. Yeah, Russia's half of it. Half of it is Siberia or unacceptable in the, the Arctic line. Of this, you know, it's so extreme with the temperatures. Yeah. But it is big. It is humongous. And Russia was roughly 6.4 million square miles. And I measured Antarctica. 5.5 million square miles. But now get this. If you cut out the pieces you just measured and stuck them on top of each other, like say this was Russia, say this was Antarctica, Antarctica was at least two or three times bigger than Russia. That's interesting. And it's smaller in land square miles. Nope. That's then, not right. How it's, deep is the earth? It's a misrepresentation. How deep? Because think about this. And they did, that, that top we just did where the, the submarine tried to go to the Titanic. Oh, I have to edit this out. Wait a minute. That's interesting. That could be part of it. We got, we got a very good editor, though, so... He could edit the plane out. That's a helicopter. Usually they fly by the river. Do the river monitoring. Yeah. That, that could be edited out easy. You just have to know the exact time it happens in there. Since it's not space. Yeah, sure. But. Okay, sorry about that. We hey. are outside, so we do get a little bit of, well, flyovers at this in this occasion. Still interesting. Yep. Yeah, like what I was saying, like, how deep did you, I think, like, remember that, the, the submarine that just went down, I'm sure you heard about that, and the uh, five divers, the five billionaires that went down there all died upon impact of the, the pressure of the water. But think about how deep does this water go down, and, and is it, because there's some spots, like, that go deeper than the Titanic. So how deep could this earth actually be? How far, like... It's a wonder what it really is. It's like it's alive, you know? And to go on that, according to the maps that we have available, the deepest point in the ocean that I'm aware of is right off the coast of Cuba or somewhere in those islands down there, right off the tip of South America. Like Venezuela or whatever. Well, Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. One of those islands in down there, the Caribbean. I'm guessing. It's a deep trench. It's like the deepest place. And if you 
you can adjust sea level. On one of those maps, you could raise the sea level up to see what mountains you can survive on if the ocean was 100 feet above sea level, mm -hmm. 1,000 feet above sea level, and you could also lower the sea level where the ocean would disappear if there was only a few thousand feet of sea water. And that's right, the deepest part is right off that coast. So it's very deep, it's miles deep. I don't know. And I was also watching a show on the Everglades in Florida, Central Florida, Southern Florida. And it was one of the few freshwater springs well, the few. Florida has some 70 spring, freshwater springs, one of the highest freshwater spring amount in the country. Uh, it was, they said, 70 million gallons an hour. It was some outrageously high number of groundwater flowing out of the ground into these springs. And I was thinking, where does that water come from? Where do you get all that fresh water coming from underneath the ground, surrounded by ocean? Mm -hmm. And there's fresh water shooting up 70 million gallons, even if it's 70,000 gallons an hour. That's a lot of fresh water. And that's what I mean. The earth is mostly water. Like if we were to dig through this ground and we kept digging, would we hit a core or would we hit water? And they did it in Russia. They got, what, some seven miles down before it was too hot. The drill bit was too hot. They couldn't do it. So we only got seven, eight miles down. But yet you see in all the books, what were you raised when you were a child? The molten core and the all molten, these. And, uh, yeah. All these things, details that you know about. Yeah. Not to be proven as fact. What's there? Like, and how far does it get, and if it's deep, how deep does it actually go? How deep is the earth? Is it, maybe that goes forever. Maybe that's something we don't know. Who knows? Maybe, like, it, the earth itself goes down forever. If that's what you want to call it, the earth. But if it was a level, just a general, like, this board, just a unending or ending plane with Antarctica... On the outside, Antarctica covers the whole outside. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's hard to believe and uh, even get a, like a, like a base place to start out, you know? Maybe we'll but never ever know what it really is. Maybe it's just impossible to know what it is. Could be impossible. Maybe this is all theories that people have and they just will never actually know yeah, not, what if the Earth is just deep forever? What if there is no space? What if it's all Earth down and this is just what's around us? It is. I think it's just life has been here for... can't even gauge the time, you know? Probably upon billions. There's probably... The number is probably limitless. Because if you could just... Billions, trillions, there's probably no end. You could just that humans have been around a lot longer than you than they say you could just supposedly we were already had this and we already destroyed ourselves with nukes and then we we built it and started all over again and we don't even realize that a lot of these aliens we're seeing it could be us our future selves or whatever yeah could be anything. They could be billions of years in the us billions and billions of years into the future could be what aliens really are. Well, everything we do now, it's like we go against the harmony of the earth. You know? When a, a bird hatch a hatchling, you know, a little fledgling bird comes out of its eggs, it knows what to do. It knows it has to eat and get its strength and it's jumping out of that tree nest and it's gonna fly and it knows what to do, you know? Everything knows what to do. Like those turtles that hatch and they have to journey all the way across the land to get into the ocean. And that's their challenge. If they, they can make know. it to the ocean, they, they live. They supposedly. know what to do. Their instincts, you know? Everything is with nature, except humans. When we're born, nothing. 
You have no idea what you're to do in this world. That's true. We're supposed to be the smartest. You can be so programmed to be anything, you know? We have technology, but that doesn't mean we're smart. Technology and intelligently smart are two different things. I think we're getting on the bad end of that spectrum. Technology is really having yeah. a negative impact on intelligence overall. Yeah, because people are just, even me, I, 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 you get so addicted to your phone, you're always looking at your phone and you're not in For, tune to what's real and what's not real. Forget how to spell. And that digital reality, oh, that virtual reality, I mean, like, like that scares me. Actually, I've done that. And, and I'm afraid of it. I don't even want to do it. I took it off. Like, yeah, it's so real. Like, what if we, what if it, we get into a virtual reality thing permanently? That's what's scary. That's why I don't even like because like, when I had the things on my eyes, I had no idea what was going on around me. And you just believe what you, you could actually, whatever you're seeing, it seems re so real that it's scary. Yep. I'm actually afraid of virtual reality. Because I'm afraid of that becoming actual reality. Yeah, it is very frightening. Years of autocorrect in the phones, mm -hmm. misspelling words and letters and everything. Yeah, autocorrect and it, and it is gets, never right either. And it gets corrected to a word, like people forget how to spell over time. Mm -hmm. Autocorrect just corrects it for me. And after spelling it wrong, it's not right anymore either. Yeah, after you spell it wrong so many times, you forget the correct way to spell it. They're definitely brainwashing all kinds of people in school, like kids. They're brainwashing kids these days to not know what gender they are. That's another topic in itself. <laughs> what gender am I today? And, and this is what they're teaching kids in school. So they're, they're manipulating everybody to follow their agenda. It's all social programming. What the, and, and these kids, we're going to have a society of people, this is what they're doing, a society of people not knowing what gender they are, not knowing what species they are, because now you can identify as animals. But nobody's going to have no, and there's no such thing as reality anymore, because they're teaching everybody fantasy life. What is not real is real, and, and it's about everything, not just gender, not just, they're manipulating an entire generation into a fantasy world. Because they don't want to show us what's really going on and who's really taking over our country. They don't want us to know what's really going on. So why is it so far-fetched that they're lying to us about the shape of the Earth or the shape of the planets or what space really is? They could be lying to us about everything and nobody questions anything and nobody realizes it. Not today. Today, above any and all things should you question how much do I believe these people what they're telling me when you look at the world today it's just all so confused backwards and wrong yeah and yet in the back of your mind you're thinking I'm supposed to listen to these people when I got a six seven year old kid that says I don't know what gender I am today that's starting to get scary and if they could, lie, if they could, like I said, if they could lie about that and brainwash kids into believing that, they could brainwash into thinking that the Earth, is, they could tell us the Earth is a triangle, and people will believe it. That's why it's taught at an early age. It's all and everything else with it. Because kids don't question that stuff, and even if they do, they're told to be quiet, little Jimmy. You're going to get mm -hmm. detention again. That, that, that's why I recommend that whatever you believe, whether you believe the earth is round or flat, whether you believe, no matter what you believe, question everything. And if you can't question everything, well, then you're easily manipulated. So I think, I, I do, I think we're being, we're brainwashed to think everything they're telling us is somewhat not true. Yeah, we're just so far off nature, you know, people just don't sit and enjoy their time, you know. One thing today that's different from the past is time. Nobody has any free time, you know. Um, and time just keeps going, like, where is it going? Like, it, like, I swear it was 15 years ago yesterday.
and nobody's bored. Is anybody bored anymore today? Do you even have time to be bored? Do you ever just sit? I'm bored say, when I sit at the hospital all night. Then I'll read a book or I'll watch TV. I've actually jogged around the, 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 the auditorium in the arts building to keep in shape so I wasn't sitting all night. But yeah, there's ways not to be bored. Yeah, that's all. But, but yet again, you were bored, but yet 20 years goes by in a blink of an eye and, you, and where did it go? Time does seem to be speeding up from when I was young. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going faster. Something's off, something's different. There's some kind of illusion going on. And that, and that, and that well, what happens to people when they pass away? Do they just vanish? Is it just another form of life that just evaporated? Or is there some kind of afterlife? Well, there's gotta be some kind of spirit world, I guess. It's another topic we get into. What happens to, are we ever, ever gonna know what happens after you pass away? Guess there's one way to find out, huh? Yeah, but then, you can't, how are you, but then you can't come back and tell anybody. Good luck reporting that back. All kinds of things we could talk about. So, uh, I guess what are we coming up on here? Uh, after 40 minutes, I Yeah, 45 minutes. We'll call that a show. I mean, we had a few specific spots. Bounced around a couple areas. Got some ideas for future shows. Yeah, we set kind of a baseline for future places to go with our notes and our thoughts and ramblings and whatever was on our mind for the day. So I guess we'll call it a show. Anything else you want to add before we call it? One thing I'd like to add is that we're definitely going to be doing this more often. We're going to try once a week, I'm guessing, or whatever we're going to figure out. But we want to do this more often and more structured. We want more structure and probably shorter shows. Because a lot of people, I, I noticed a lot of people like shorter shows as opposed to long shows. 30, 45 minutes is all right. Yeah. Quick show, not too bad, not too short. All right. So we'll call it there. Well, it was nice to be back. We haven't done a show in a long time. It feels good, good to be to get back. Them. Can't wait to do more now. I'm, I'm excited for more now. Feels good to get some stuff off my chest. I don't know about you. But it was nice to be back. Thank you, everybody, for your time, patience, and open-mindedness, and have a healthy and beautiful... So long, everyone. Yeah, have a good day. Goodbye.